Have you ever been mining and heard this sound? Did you know it is a dark secret? Do you know the true purpose of the Warden or that the Endermen were once players? Today, we're testing Minecraft's scariest myths. And to start, has Mojang been lying to us about blood rain since 2012? To find out, we've gone back in time to version 1.4.2. Now, this update was released on October 24th, 2012, alongside Halloween, and they named it the Pretty Scary Update, which sounds pretty suspicious to me. Now, this update brought mobs like the Wither and Witch for the very first time, and as you can see, it is really, really old. These graphics are awful, it's not even loading. But allegedly, they also added blood rain. At least that's what players claimed, posting videos online about it and tweeting it out. But the creator of Minecraft, Notch, denied all these reports, claiming that no one ever programmed it into the game. Which might be true because no future updates have the blood rain. However, this isn't the first time Mojang has lied to players about accidentally adding something and then fixing it. Now, obviously the easiest way to test is just by making it rain. And luckily, this update commands will also add it. So let's have a go. Okay, here goes nothing, guys. Get ready. That looks red. That looks red. Oh, it doesn't look red. I'm actually stupid. Bro, did I actually just get convinced by all of these myths and stories on the internet? Are you serious? This is just normal rain. There ain't nothing blood or scary about it. But then again, could blood rain just be something that happens naturally? I mean, why would Mojang make a command for something they're trying to hide? Well, maybe they are telling the truth and it actually has something to do with Halloween. Wait, I have an idea. Instead of letting my computer set the time automatically, I'm going to turn that off, which will now allow me to set the date and time manually. And we're going back to October 31st, the day of Halloween in 2012, because if the Mojang devs are telling the truth, maybe there's something much spookier going on. After all, this is the scariest holiday of the year. Who knows what's controlling this? And you know what? Just for extra spooky, we're going to exactly 3 a.m. All right, my computer, it's time has been changed. Great, literally the only thing that changed was it stopped raining, which is useless to us since we're actually looking for rain. Now, we used a command last time, but this time I want it to spawn naturally and see if that makes a difference. However, I have absolutely no idea how long it's gonna take to rain or even if it will rain at all on Halloween. But while we're waiting, has the warden actually been sent from the nether to destroy the overworld? To test this theory, I need to see just how dedicated the warden is to coming back to the overworld. So if we head to the nether and spawn in a warden, I mean, if it wants to destroy the overworld, it should run straight back there. I mean, that's its mission. You... No, that's just luck. There's no way, right? That's just pure luck. Surely not. Okay, we're spawning another one. It's like it doesn't even want to be in the nether. No matter how many I spawn, there's no way that exactly three of them just made a straight beeline. That has to be programmed into its code. So why doesn't it want to be in the nether? Why does it want to destroy the overworld? Wait, 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 hold up. I just want to check that this isn't some glitch that we're going through right now. If I spawn any other like vanilla mobs, let's say a cow. Yeah, this man's ain't care. Neither does the wolf. Nobody cares whatsoever. Uh, okay, I thought for a minute it was actually going to walk through the portal there. But the warden, we spawned this dude in, and boom, he's straight in. Doesn't even care about these mobs making sounds. It's crazy. How? Okay, wait, I have an idea. What happens if we block off the portal? Where does it go then? Oh, wait, we probably should block off the other side so it doesn't just walk around. All right, let's see. So if I spawn him in... Okay. Doesn't seem to care much about the sound being made by that cat. I can literally see the sound being made and he's just wandering off. He didn't even try and walk to the portal. Wait, he just walked straight into the warp forest. Does that mean something? I mean, he, he seems dedicated to a mission. He didn't care about that cow. And now he's just sitting here. He's stopped. He beelined it to this warp forest. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get Guys, look around. Do you see these blocks? Hold up, hold up. Look at Skulk for a second. There's no way. I, how did I not see this before, guys? These blocks, they're so similar. They're like overworld versions of the warped forest. Hold up, I have another test to see whether he came from the nether originally. 
all nether mobs are literally fireproof. If we grab a wither and chuck him in lava, you can see, boom, doesn't affect him. It's the same with every mob in the nether. Only overworld mobs are affected by lava. So that means the warden should die to lava. No fire damage, none. Absolutely none. That's insane. So he has to come from the nether, but why would the warden want to infect the overworld and not the nether? Is it because there's skulk there and when he kills a mob, it spreads the skulk? I mean, that could be possible or is it something else? Wait, if this myth is true, could that mean the portal in the deep dark is actually the original nether portal? Not only that, but what if the Enderman is the original Steve? Now, I know this theory sounds crazy, but it was actually proposed by a very trusted YouTuber, Matt Pat. But I'm gonna say I'm losing faith in him a bit because I have nothing in common with this Enderman. I mean, look at us side by side. He doesn't even want to stand next to me. How is he made from me? He's much taller, he's slimmer, the man can teleport. I mean, he can place blocks, but that's about the only thing. But there's also tons of abandoned structures in the game. Someone had to build them and the Endermen are the only entities that can use blocks. So if this theory is correct, I should just be able to chuck a ton of these blocks down and the Endermen will use them to construct another end city, which would prove that Endermen, just like Steve, can also build things. So I'm just gonna give them a ton of every type of block here. We got the purple block, purple pillar, end stone bricks, and then 25% of the magenta stained glass. All right, those are the exact blocks you need and I think that's plenty to construct another one. Just how long is it gonna take? While I was waiting, I continued researching and came across this very creepy video. I found proof of ghosted Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, right, that definitely sounds clickbait. What are we doing here? Okay, what? what is that seed, bro? It looks like another language. Uh, this just looks like a normal swamp vibe to me. No ghost. Ooh, but he's got coordinates on, so if it's true, we should just be able to teleport their way a map. They don't spawn a witch's heart. Did that map say help me? No. Now, this is where it gets strange. I was looking for the seed and it turns out the seed literally translates to spirit in English and it's written in the ancient Indian language of Sanskrit. I'll just place those exact same symbols into Minecraft and those look like the seed used in the video. Yeah, this spawn doesn't look scary at all. <laughs> Bro, we got a shipwreck. Ooh, I'm so scared. But then again, he did show us his coordinates and we are nowhere near that location. All right, I've got it up on my other monitor here. So we're gonna teleport straight there. Uh, negative 39026716684. Okay, let's see whether he was telling the truth. Yep, that's definitely a swamp biome. Do we see that? There's the witch's hut. All right, let's find out guys. Here's goes, there's not even a check. There's not, not even a chance, bro. Right. This myth is hella cat. Man must be using like a texture pack or something for that map. Bro, why are we wasting time doing this? All right, I gotta check in on those Endermen. Wonderful. Another very disappointing myth. The cube is still here. I mean, yeah, they've moved a couple of blocks, but nothing that resembles an end city. I'm sorry, Matt Pat. I think I'm gonna have to call this myth Faye. Chorus fruit. Wait, I just had a brain blast. What if Endermen had evolved from Steve? Then they wouldn't be able to survive the end without food. I mean, no player can. And if we go ahead and grab ourselves a sword, the only other mob here in the end is the Shulkers, right? And what do they drop? Not food. Which means Chorus Fruits are the only thing the ancient Steves could eat, which would explain why they're so tall. They needed to reach the top of the Chorus Fruits. It also explains how they got their teleportation ability because they probably kept eating the fruit and through all the years, they gained the ability to teleport. But if we're from the same ancient mutation, then why does the Enderman attack Steve? See, if I switch into survival, this man's gonna go absolutely loco on me. Unless I stare straight at him. He will only attack me when I look away. It's like he's hurt that I'm ignoring him. And the Endermen make a ton of sounds. Maybe they're trying to tell us something. But in the current form, I, I can't understand the sounds. Wait, we're gonna load the sounds into another program. Here we have all the idle sounds of the Endermen. So the sounds they make when they're not attacking you. Let's take a listen. Do you guys hear that? No way, all right, all right. We've got to break these up. If I copy this and put this into a brand new audio file, listen to this on its own. That sounds like hello. Okay, and then if we grab this next sound, we grab that, we're gonna put this into another audio file as well. Listen to this. That literally sounds like what's up. 
What's up? I, you guys can hear that, right? Okay, and so this last sound, listen to this. It sounds like look for the eye, like the eye of Ender, I think. Look for the eye. You guys can hear that, right? No other mobs in the game can talk, which further proves the myth that the Endermen were originally Steve. But that's not even the most messed up thing. The face on the totem of Undying might not actually be a pillager face, but actually the face of its victim. Since you can't even craft totems in Minecraft, the evokers have to have a way of obtaining them. My first theory was, well, they raid villagers. Maybe when they murder these guys, they steal the totems from them. But you can see he drops nothing. Compared to the evoker, which when we kill him, he's gonna go ahead and drop a nice old totem for us. Wait, guys, look at the eyes of the totem. They're green, the same color as XP. I mean, most people think it's emerald, but what if it's XP? Because evokers also use magic, and to use magic in the crafting table, you need XP. Could that mean that pillagers don't just raid villagers for fun and give them a nice, quick, and easy death? They're captured as war prisoners, brought back to be tortured inside this woodland mansion. I mean, that would explain why there were jail cells in here, and then turned into totems to use for us when we die. Which means every time that we die, we're sacrificing the life of another to save ourselves. Now that is messed up. But at least when using a totem, you don't hear this sound. <sighs> but what's causing these sounds? Reports claim it's a secret entity. Mojang added to the game, but you can't actually find. Which got me thinking, there is actually a mob in the game that Mojang added, but decided to have it never spawn in naturally. You can only get it through commands. So we're switching to survival. Let's see what kind of sounds we hear. Okay, the arrow sound. Some slight moving. What if we attack him? Nothing. These sounds don't sound anything like the cave sounds. They just sound like normal mob attacking sounds. But then if it isn't this entity, then what actually is making those sounds? I kept searching the internet for a new lead until I found this. Now, when you beat the game and kill the Ender Dragon, the End Portal spawns in and you're able to go back to the overworld, get the Elytra, go to the Ender City, all of these wonderful and amazing things. But there is one thing that most of us don't really care about. If we search into survival mode here, guys, you're gonna see the XP drops, we collect this, and we jump in. What are we met with? This credits screen. Now, I would take a pretty good guess and say most of us do not read all this boring text. But there is actually something really important which could give us a clue as to where the cave sounds come from. Look at this. Who are we? Once we were called the spirit of the mountain, father, son, mother, moon, ancestral spirits, animal spirits, jinn, ghosts, the green man, then gods, demons, angels, poltergeists, aliens, extraterrestrials, leptons, quarks. The words change. We do not change. What does that mean? Look at this. The very last words. You are the player. Wake up. What if the whole game itself is nothing but a dream and the sounds you hear in the caves are people from the real world trying to wake you up? Okay, I, I know that sounds crazy, but I want you guys to let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Wait, do you guys hear that? It's rain. It's from our 1.4.2. We need to open this game again. Okay, I got to bring this over from my other monitor. Let's have a look at... No. No. What? I can't believe it. The blood rain, it's real. What does it mean? What is it doing? What is, I don't get it. Blood rain? There's no way this is real. I'm seeing it with my own eyes. You guys, listen. Did Mojang lie? Is there something else going on here? What does this have to do with Halloween? Who's telling the truth? Who's not? If Mojang kept this hidden from us, what else are they hiding? Hidden entities, portals to another dimension? I don't want to stay here. I don't want to know what this means. That's a test for another video.